ruined castle standing above the mist-shrouded moors of southern England. It might be the kind of place you would expect to be haunted, if you believed in ghosts. The whole thing really about this place is, is amazing. The ghosts that occur here. We had a strange feeling there was something wrong. It just started getting pretty weird. You learn to control your imagination, because at Berry Pomeroy, if you let your imagination run away with you, you could be a raven lunatic. Barry Pomeroy Castle has been abandoned for over 300 years. Venturing to this remote location, visitors are surrounded by eroding buildings, forgotten cemeteries, crumbling parapets, and something else. It's just brooding and evil. The evil is there in the atmosphere. Tony Cornell is one of England's most respected paranormal investigators. He's here at Barry Pomeroy to conduct the first comprehensive investigation of the castle. In my view, it's one of the most interesting cases I think I've come across. Basically because so many people have seen things and felt things. You don't get that in all hauntings. Cornell meets up with historian Derek Seymour, an expert on the castle and its dark secrets. The best known ghost here is the White Lady. And the White Lady is, of course, the unfortunate Lady Margaret, who is seen to walk at the top of the stairs in that tower, down in the dungeon. She is really quite frequently seen. Seymour believes that this White Lady is the ghost of Lady Margaret Pomeroy, who died of starvation imprisoned in this dungeon. Her sister locked her up after discovering they were both in love with the same man. Those brave enough to enter the dungeon have felt her ghostly presence. When we first went down the stairs into the chamber, it was dark, it was damp, and it wasn't a nice place to be. But then this evil presence, you could sense it was evil. I don't know how to describe it any other way, really. And then I heard the footsteps, very quick, very light, and the closer she got, the more panic-stricken I felt. I just wanted to get out of the place and, and not come back. <laughs> In his investigation, Seymour interviewed Jack Hazard, who used to work at the ruins as a master stonemason. Hazard not only had a ghostly encounter here, he photographed it. It started to rain, and it st the wind started to blow. And I thought there was something happening unusual. So I got the disc camera out and I took five or six shots. And on five of the prints, white shapes came out. Whatever they were, I have no idea, but it was a most unusual Sunday morning. There have also been sightings of a blue lady at the castle. According to some, she is the spirit of a young maiden who was raped by her father, a prominent Norman lord. When she gave birth to his child, she killed it rather than live with the shame. And this unfortunate child was strangled. Now, she's quite frequently seen. She's very evil, and people don't like the sight of her at all. Another entity has also been identified by psychic investigator Bob Dalby. I was conducting an investigation, expecting nothing at all. I was about to leave, when just by the rampart walls and the stairs leading down, I saw this huge black cloud. And to me, it seemed probably the hugest and blackest, deepest thing I'd ever seen. Dolby quickly fled the castle, but the menacing force followed him to his house. It later revealed itself to his wife. I actually had the experience of somebody sitting on the back of my legs while I was lying on the bed, thinking it was Bob messing about. I told him to get off, turned around, and it was actually a little girl. Well, they both came to see me the next afternoon. They were so terrified. And I can tell you that they were frozen with shock. Everyone who visits Barry Pomeroy Castle seems to experience something unexplainable. To me, this is probably, I go farther and say it is, the most haunted castle in England. There is something pretty potent here. There's a very evil force, and if ever you encounter it on going to Barry Pomeroy, get out quickly.